Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Chicago, Zooming with the Alderman series of interviews. My name is Ola Yinkadi Koya. Founded 101 years ago, right here in Chicago, the League is a nonpartisan political organization which encourages informed and active participation of citizens in government. Two, very important, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The Chicago League is one of the hundreds of local leagues all across the country. These interviews with the Alderman are part of efforts to educate people about, about those who represent us in setting the policies and ordinances that govern us here in Chicago. Today, our guest is Alderman Napolitano of the 41st Ward. Welcome, Alderman Napol Napolitano. We appreciate you taking time to meet with us. Please know that the Zoom session is being recorded and we will be available for viewing after today on the League's website. We'll be sending you Alderman Napolitano and everyone who's registered for this program who is not a member a link to the video when it becomes available. Also, everyone should know that we provide the Alderman a copy of the questions I'll be asking ahead of time. Before starting on these questions, we wanna show you a map of the 50 wards in Chicago. The 50 yeah. wards in Chicago. The cursor will show you the location of the 41st ward. What's the map up? And here's a small map, a miniature map of the 41st ward, which is a small portion of the large ward. Alderman, would you like to maybe just kind of share a little bit about um, the map, what you see with the map? Let's, or maybe let's uh, take another look at the map. Uh, uh, let's just take, yeah. Uh, Great, excellent. I actually oh, I have the map up. Um, okay, now I got it. Yep, I can see it. Got them both. I see that one now too. Okay, great. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing more about your work. The fact that you're near O'Hare, that's kind of exciting. Okay, great. Now let's get started. Please describe your war. Where is it and what are the main boundaries? Yeah, the, the 41st Ward is the farthest northwest side uh, ward that you have in the city of Chicago. Uh, we're bordered by at least seven different suburbs. So we go um, to the north, uh, we have the uh, Edgebrook, uh, a smidge of the Sauganash area. Uh, that's the northwest. And then as you slide over to the more to the west, that's our farthest. Um, I'm sorry, that's the Northeast. That's the farthest Northeast portion of our ward. Um, as you move over to the, the Northwest, you hit the Edison Park uh, area. And then as you slide down um, to the South of Edison Park, you hit Norwood Park, Oriole Park and Big Oaks area. Uh, and then as you oh. slide over to the, the West of there, you hit the, um, the, uh, Kennedy, the Kennedy Cumberland neighborhood. And then that big circle to the far, far left, the far west is O'Hare Airport. Um, Excellent. Because I was going to ask you, what neighborhoods does it include? So you sort of yeah. expounded on some of that. Yeah, and we're surrounded uh, neighborhood-wise. We're we're surrounded uh, by the suburbs as far as Lincolnwood, uh, a small portion of Skokie, uh, Niles, Park Ridge, Howard Heights, Norridge. Um, and a little, and also if you look in that map too, you'll see like a little cutout in the center of it that is just a white area. That is actually unincorporated Norwood Park. So it's technically a part of the city of Chicago, but it is inside uh, incorporated in the city of Chicago. And that's fascinating. That's very fascinating. The history of the city and the wards and the maps is fascinating. That area right there boggles us. There's two, uh, there's two ladies in the office that deal with a lot of issues in and around it and their name are Mary and uh, Maureen so we call that area Mary Moville. Oh that uh, is so cool. <laughs> they handle all the area all the issues that come out of that uh, that location. Excellent. What is the makeup of the ward in terms of residential commercial or industrial? Yeah so the northwest side of Chicago the 41st ward is probably the highest percent of it is um, is residential um, mostly entirely I'm sorry, not mostly the time, mostly all single family homes. Um, and then we run into our, our, our two, uh, two flats, three flats, four flats, and five flats. Um, as you move to the west end of our ward, 
Um, that's the highest amount of our, our apartments. And um, as you vertical, um, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of apartments in that area uh, as it goes vertical. Oh, anywhere up to about 9,000 apartments, give or wow. take, within a, I would say, about a one mile by one mile um, circumference area in that is area. Is that unique to city wards in Chicago? Yeah, you see it throughout the city of Chicago. You see okay. uh, um, a lot of that happens. Um, as, as populations grow and you run out of space, you have to go vertical um, and they're beautiful. A lot of them are, a lot of these three flats, four flats, five flats, even up to 12 flats are owned by residents of the 41st ward as well. They actually live in that location and operate operated as a source of income um, as, as rental units, um, and it, it works out really well. It's 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 a beautiful area. Excellent. How does the war change under the new map? Well, unfortunately, we have to have an, a new map. I I the way I look at it is I I've been living here for forty seven years, and I've I've known the ward map to be a couple of different variations, but it's always about community in the northwest side community, whether we're in the ward or not. It's always community. We're all we're all really tight knit to each other, um, and what we unfortunately lose is the um, the Edgebrook area to our far uh, northeast portion of the ward. Um, that ward that area that will be attached now to the forty fifth ward, and we gain an area to the south uh, east, which was formerly part of the forty first ward as well. So in essence. It seems like if you look back at, at the old ward maps in, in history, you can see that the 41st ward kind of toggled back and forth between, between the same exact map. Um, so okay. residents of the old 41st ward will be back in the 41st ward uh, on this okay. map. Interesting. But so what are some of the key issues facing your ward? Um, our key issues up on the northwest side is one of the biggest ones is infrastructure. Um, okay. Since we are the single family uh, resident area, because uh, all wards go by population, our ward tends to be spread out so largely. I think we're the third largest in the city um, that when you get your menu dollars towards infrastructure, we're only able to resurface anywhere between 16 and 18 streets uh, throughout the entire 41st ward. And we have a wow. little bit close probably a little bit over 750,000, I'm sorry, 750 hundreds streets in our ward. And we're only able to resurface 16 to 18 per year. Tree trimming is an issue because we have, we love it. We love it up on the Northwest side. We have a lot of trees, uh, but just getting to the dead branches that need to be trimmed or the dead trees that need to become, to come down. Um, it, it's hard. It's difficult because there are so many. Um, and three other big issues is uh, flooding. The northwest side of Chicago mm. is notorious uh, for flooding. Um, and, and it's not even in your great storms anymore. It's just on simple rains. We have a lot of streets that flood um, and, as well as base. Airplane noise is always a problem. Yeah. As O'Hare has expanded since 2005 to present day, you're seeing traffic patterns for flights that are going over areas that never had flights over them. Uh, and then I think one of the big ones that's really affecting, uh, sorry to hit you with so many, no, it's okay. We want to hear this. <laughs> Another big area uh, um, of complaints uh, or issue is there's a lack of, uh, of police officers in the 16th district. Um, 16th district, once again, is, is the largest district in the city of Chicago and has uh, the least amount of officers. Um, and we're losing the most amount of officers every year as well. So you're seeing less and less of, of the patrol car uh, patrolling the street just because there are no officers to do it. Um, I believe the... The 16th district is about 28.8 square miles um, and, the sick, and the 41st ward is just in the 16th district. Some other wards, wow. other, other districts, but we're just in the 16th district. So um, in our ward, we're lucky to have two police cars, maybe three at best. Patrol. Wow. And I know that's probably kind of a little frustrating for you because you're a former police officer, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So... As a former officer, what's your take real quickly on that? Um, you know, citywide, you know, it's not just it's not just in the 41st Ward. Citywide, people want to be protect, pr protected. Um, it's the it's one of the number one issues that people are seeing right now as far as when they're doing surveys of what residents or constituents want to see. It's they want us to feel protected and they want to feel safe. Um, and it's 
you know, when, when you lose that ability to protect your residents, your constituents, um, then you start losing them as residents and constituents, yeah. they start, start leaving. Um, so it, it's, it's very frustrating. I've got three, you know, I've lived here my whole life. I, I'm here with my wife and three kids. Uh, and I think about it every day. I want them to make sure that they can go out and play and feel safe. And, um, every day it seems that the variable seems to change of, of, of yeah. our city. Yeah. Not, Okay, but, excellent. When did you first join the city council? I got elected in 2015. So I ran in okay. the 2014 election leading up to 2015. Um, I ran against the uh, the incumbent at the time was uh, uh, the alderman had sat in that chair. It, it was her first term as well. So mm -hmm. only four years when I ran. Okay, so you chose to run for re-election in 2019. What was behind that with some patent? some different kind of, uh, maybe you, were you thinking maybe there's some other things I want to complete or um, this is my ward, my, my community, a part of my life and I want to be a part of the development of the community. What were some of your thoughts when you chose to run again yeah. in 2019? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think you hit it on the head but with, with what you said at first. It's always, you, in, in talking with other aldermen and not just aldermen, state elected officials, uh, in the state of Illinois and even other states when I have the opportunity to talk, you always have that feeling of unfinished business um, that, yeah. that you wanted to um, accomplish that you didn't get done in your first four years. Or even in, in my case, I look at the way uh, city council is going and the way the city of Chicago is going. And I'm fearful that uh, politically and, and decision wise, we're heading in the wrong directions. Um, it's getting, it's beginning to be about more political um, um, movements than just taking care of our residents. Uh, you know, if you, if you talk to your resident, they care about the 30 feet in front of their house and the 30 feet behind their house. Mm -hmm. They'll chime in and they're interested in politics, but they care about what's right in front of them because that's one, not, not the only, but it's one of their most pride possessions, their, their property. And it's one where they have a lot of, or, or most people have the most amount of investment in that. Yeah. Uh, and I always feel like if, if, if we're not attending to the, the, the ground zero um, people of your community, then you're not advocating properly as a representative. Exactly, uh, exactly. I, because I know, I always think of me and I think to myself, I said, wow, the job on all of them is so intense because they've got to worry about their own personal issues. Is because you're late. You're you're just like we are. You're you know you're constituent in a sense, not really, but you know you're yeah. managing our, your community where you dwell. And um, I always think to myself, wow, um, I know I should be concerned about the larger picture, but right here is more important to me. What are you going to yeah. do right here? I agree. That's kind of key for me as well. Um, you sir, oh, do you have any other employment? I can't see how you would, but maybe you no. do. I don't. A lot of other aldermen find the ability to do it. I don't have any other employment. What I do is I coach. Uh, I am a hockey coach. So I coach uh, two travel all-girl hockey teams uh, that travel um, throughout the state and uh, in, in some cases go in different parts of, uh, of, of the country and play other Absolutely. states. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. They, uh, they, How did that come about? So I grew up as a hockey player, mostly a football player. Um, but uh, as my daughter's got older they wanted to play hockey like I, I still play and they watched me playing and they wanted to play and they started skating when they were about six years old and now my oldest is going to be 16 and her sister will wow. be four okay. and my son plays as well and um, you see them advance so much and they're so much better than we ever were as athletes that um, I got into I got back in the game and started coaching about 10 years ago and then when I hooked up with these all girl teams about seven years six years ago um, they're just the greatest athlete in the world. They, uh, they, they will, you tell them to do something, they're going to process it and they're going to do it and they do it better than you tell them to do it. And it's, I've coached boys before and it's, you can tell them what to do, but if you shake a set of keys, then they, you lose the, they get distracted. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, women, you know how we are. We just know everything. <laughs> We're the greatest. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you serve as the vice chair of the rules committee. Would you describe the work of the committee and what matters comes before it? Would you would you describe the work of the committee and what matters come before it? Yeah, the the, the rule the rules committee acts more of like not, not so much the disciplinary committee. It's more of that committee that tries to figure out where we went wrong as far as our parliamental procedures or our 
uh, submitting uh, matters as far as ordinances and um, and resolutions. And it kind of brings stuff back to, you know, the, the city of Chicago and, and most all bodies um, uh, follow Robert's rules. And it kind of makes sure that we're doing stuff the parliamentary process properly um, as far as how we introduce, how we talk about items, how they're voted on, how quorums have to exist. And it just kind of, it's one of those committees and, and rightfully so it's it's one of those committees that all the aldermen are in and it has multiple vice chairs because we all got to kind of keep each other in check uh of what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong um okay. it's a necessity okay okay excellent what if any changes would you like to see made in the operation of the council yeah you know and that's a great question because that leads right back to your the last question with uh, the rules committee um one of the things that frustrates me the most is um, when myself or any city council member prior to me or even before me, when you come up with a great concept as far as ordinance or resolution and you work it out with your colleagues and you work it out with your residents um, and, you, and, and you're like, okay, we got it. This is going to fix things. This is going to make things better. Um, but politically, it's not going down the right avenue for, um, for administration or some city council. They have the ability just to send that that resolution or that ordinance right to rules where it gets buried and it gets gets hidden or or you know or it's really tough to bring it out of rules to discuss it and what frustrates me and, and a lot of other aldermen is that's our job our job is to debate and, and to figure out what works and what doesn't work every time i introduce an ordinance i always tell every alderman this is my concept this is what I think is, is going to work. But if I did something wrong or you know something better to fix this, I'm all in. But to take it and not have that discussion and bury it um, and not possibly be able to get it out of a committee, um, I think that's wrong. I think that's mm -hmm. where we're losing uh, our ability to figure out what works you know, organically, what works holistically, and what works for the entire city of Chicago other than what you know, when these are buried, it's because of, of political directions that people are going. Um, and it, that's why they try to, to, to kind of put bricks on these. So that yeah. would be one that would change. You know, I don't think you should have the ability just because you don't want to hear it or just because you don't agree with it or just because politically it's not right that you get to bury it. It should be able to go to a committee and be de de debated and discussed um, on whether it works well for the entire city of Chicago. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think to myself, sometimes maybe some elected officials need to go back to politics 101 or something, you know, just a little quick training on this is what you do, this is what constituents expect, and this is how it's done. Yes. Yeah. But that's just my own mindset. Okay, um, what are a few of the actions by the city to reduce gun violence that you think have been effective or will be effective? Um. There's a couple of different effective ones, but one that I do think would be affected is going back once again to what we just talked about. I introduced a, uh, um, a gun ordinance. I introduced a, 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 a Chicago criminal um, accountability ordinance. And what it says is it, it gives the ability to go after people who are carrying guns illegally and find them. Uh, you don't necessarily have to put them into jail, but you can find them for illegally having a gun. That means you don't have your, your FOID card. You don't have your concealed carry card. You're not, it's not a registered gun um, with the, the city of Chicago, state of Illinois, um, um, through all the, the, pro the proper legal uh, channels. If that gun's being carried illegally, um, when you take that person into custody, you can inventory that gun and you can write them an ANOV, which we already have. ANOVs have already existed. Uh, and that ANOV gives them a court date to go in front of, um, uh, it's not quite a judge, but it's like a magistrate. It's like a, uh, a person put in that position um, to make a proper ruling, mostly of all of our attorneys or affiliated with, with the legal um, department. And they can say, okay, do you have these, you have that time period to come in with those FOID card, the uh, concealed carry card, your, that show that your gun's registered. And that ticket could be thrown out and, and, and torn up and, and, and um, disregarded. But if you don't have those things, it, you're hit with a hefty fine up to $10,000. Um, I, I Unfortunately, uh, curbing crime in the city of Chicago uh, isn't as easy as just saying all guns are going to be banned because the problem is, is 
Um, those who illegally have guns are always going to find a way to illegally have guns. It's the, it's the law uh, abiding citizens that are just trying to protect themselves that will be hurt more by just banning guns. Um, I'm, but I'm not, I'm not against opposed against different avenues we can go into making guns a lot more difficult to get. But I think if you hit people in the pocket when it comes to an illegal action as such as carrying a gun, I think that would be a huge hit. On, on, when, when I was a police officer, you, you never saw guns on a person's body. It was rarely did you ever, it was on them. Usually it was hidden somewhere and somebody would go get it when, in, in, you know, when they needed it. Now, because we're, we're losing the ability to, to process uh, and charge offenders properly and put them into to, to prison where they belong for carrying a gun or shooting at a person, now they all carry guns on them right now because they're, they're fearless of prosecution. Um, I believe if you hit them in the pocket, say, okay, if you're fearless of prosecution, that's fine. You don't have the proper identification to have this gun, you're going to get hit in the pocket for it. Um, and that money, we even earmarked that money to go th towards the uh, underfunded pensions um, in the city of Chicago. It's, it would be a huge help. That's a billion dollar deficit that we need to fix. Yeah. Have you had a chance to really share that idea with? Yeah. With I Big powers. <laughs> yeah, so I introduced it. I had, um, I think, well over 19 or 21 off um, uh, aldermen sign on for it, and it went into city council and it got buried. It got sent to rules, right? Oh, I was about to say it'd go to rules and just sit yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, so it went there to die, but we're still staying on it as hard as we can. Uh, we think it has great promise. Uh, it also, to show you how well that this ordinance was written and how well it can work, the mayor tried to attach this to her ordinance where she is uh, using um, the legal ability to go after assets of criminals who, um, who break the law or, you know, um, and, and they could hit them in the pocket uh, by, by, on behalf of their assets, uh, which a lot of aldermen are against that. So now mine now is kind of attached to that one. So it might die uh with that ordinance as well so it hasn't come back up for for briefings i always say keep hope alive you know absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> keep hope alive okay league members have observed that the committees and council regularly pass agenda items for which the actual contents text of what is being approved are not available for the public to see until days after the meeting this is because of the provision in rule 41 that allows the mayor and the city department to present direct introduction of items to the committee. There's no number assigned and the text is not posted on Legistar. Would you support requiring that any such direct introduction items and their text be made available with an assigned item number to the public no later than two business days prior to the meeting? Yeah, I, I, one of the big reasons why I ran going back to another one of your first questions was transparency. Um, in politics now, if, it, if, if you're not, if you don't have transparency and it's more of that secret squirrel type of city council, you're going to lose your constituents. No matter what you do citywide, they're always going to think that, uh, that your members and city council are plotting and planning on their own to run the city how they feel fit. Uh, if you don't give people information um, about what's going on and what's coming up and give them the ability to talk and give their, their, their ideologies on how, why this works or doesn't work, then you're not you're not a democracy or you're 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 a, you're a monarch. And um, I think, I, like I said, I ran on 150% transparency. Uh, anything we do moving forward, residents should know about it. I, I always felt like in this position too, prior to getting into it and now getting in now as I'm into it, um, there are city officials, not just elected, but even the bureaucrats too, that think that they know best. Uh, it's well no we know best and, and people will understand after we do it but that's that's not the case it's you know this this we're, we live in a yin yang society whereas what you think is great and works well here may be on the absolute flip side uh somewhere else in the city and you could be hurting people more than helping them so if you're not giving people information 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 that's one thing our ward does we do it with emails we do it with mailing letters that go out we walk letters in mailboxes um, make sure everyone has more than enough information that in some cases they go, hey, chill out with this information. You're giving us too much. If they're saying that, then you're doing your job right. Okay, good. Good, good to hear. Currently, when one candidate for mayor, mayor or alderman does not receive at least 50% of plus one vote in the February election, 
the top two vote getters are on the ballot in a runoff election in April. What is your view about using ranked choice voting in February to determine the winner in lieu of the runoff? Attached is it lieu of the runoff? Yeah, what are your views on that? I, you know, I like the way the process is set up right now. I'm, I'm, I, I did some research because when, when you brought this question and I saw it, I, 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 had to, I, I did what I did to fix my light bulb on my car. I go to YouTube and, and they do great tutorials on, on how rank, um, right. rank works. It was, it was absolutely very insightful. I personally like the old, the old way that it's done. I like that. I'll start here. I like the, the most important thing about this position that everybody forgets. And that is, this is a non-political position. You are not supposed to be running as a party. You are not supposed to be supporting a party. You are not running as a party affiliate. That's for your committeeman position, which is not this as an alderman. And what I like about this position so much is that you can have a panel running for a position that are all Democrats, all Republicans, all Democrats, or mixed Democrats and Republican. And in the end, whoever are the best two candidates come into a runoff and then go go toe to toe. Um, I like the ability of if 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 an alderman isn't good enough to win by 50% plus one or more, that that second runner up has the ability to go at that alderman or that sitting incumbent um, head to head. And now <clears throat> you see people were one way or the other way. Here's your last candidates. This is who, who you have to pick for. Pick the best one of the two. Um, and and I, I, think, I think it works well that way. Uh, it's a longer process. I, I, I agree with that. But I think it's I think it's kind of it, it holds some strength. Like here's your last two candidates. Like when I when I ran in 2015, I didn't beat the, the incumbent outright. Um, but come when, when we went to our runoff, uh, we won. And then what we did is we built off of that election. Um, I think we won by 53 percent or somewhere in there. Uh, and we built off that election and, and said, OK, what do we need to do better and how do we need to become what we said we were going to become when we ran the first time and then come the next election we we won by just almost about 70 percent um outright in the election so it's a gauge of saying hey you're doing the right thing people want you here or hey you're not doing the right thing you better start uh getting some boxes and making sure the new person that comes in uh is advocating uh well for your ward and you help them out as well Make sure you help out. Excellent, if you, excellent, excellent. You help them out. I love how you, you know, you went in depth with that because a lot of times we read about it, you hear it, but it's good to hear from somebody who's actually in the process dealing with it, a really a true understanding of. It. And I do appreciate you explaining it in depth. And thank you very much for that. Perfect. If the league wanted to support one of your initiatives, what steps would you what steps would you recommend the league take? If they we want to support one of your initiatives, what steps should we take? I think the way you the, the league is involved already is 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 spot on. Um, I, I noticed it in especially in my last three years when when matters come up, um, it's we're in a vocal society now. If you're not vocal, um, I think prior societies and no offense to prior times, most people just assumed that um, you know information or people's opinions were getting passed out or passed along. Um, and the way you do it now and the way a lot of other groups do it, you, you jump on that committee meeting and you, you're, you're heard in, in the, um, the uh, citizen conversation point. You're writing your aldermen, uh, you're writing your elected, not just aldermen, your state representatives, you're writing them letters and telling them where you feel as a group um, of how what's coming up in city council or in state, uh, in, in the House or in the Senate, how it's going to affect you um, and your neighbors and your loved ones and how you don't agree with it or agree with it. Um, it's just about involvement. What we notice here in our office is we might say, oh, this sounds like a great idea. The next thing you know, you start getting a bunch of phone calls and then you stop and talk with those phone calls and say, okay, what am I getting wrong here? And they'll tell you X, Y, and Z. You always have to kind of figure out, you know, sometimes not with, with any group, some, some things are agenda uh, uh, based. A lot of them are, um, which I think is crazy, are um, lobbyist based. So you'll, you'll have an initiative that you know doesn't work well for your ward, doesn't work well for the city of Chicago. You might be against it as an alderman, but you'll start getting phone calls from people or letters, and then you'll find out that there's a lobbyist behind it or even um, some other group behind it. So it's not really that genuine. Um, so you got to kind of pick and choose. But to answer your question, 
stay as involved as you are. Um, it, it, it's the most important thing as an elective to know, elected to know that your decisions based on what, what, how people, your people uh, of your city and your community want you to vote. Okay, excellent. Okay, so this, I probably should have asked this initially, but I'm just going, I'm, I will continue with the question. It's a little bit, sure. just explain a little bit more in depth. Okay, so for example, asking members to call or write their alder people, sending written communication from the league to the appropriate committee members or all members of the city council. So that kind of goes back into what you talked about initially, but um, this is the other portion of that. So could we, I mean, would it be appropriate to write letters? Would you want those type of things to take place or any type of communication um, from the league to the appropriate committee members on the council or anything along those lines? Yeah, I think the, the biggest, I, I, my personal opinion, what works best is, is the letter or the, the email. Um, so you don't, you don't use too much paper and too much, uh, you know, envelopes. Um, if you send a letter by email, and I think for me personally, when I get that that chain email, it seems a little, a little less genuine. Um, it, so what usually with the chain, what I mean by that is you'll get, it's already pre-written and somebody's name will be filled in. So they'll just take out I, Tom Smith, and then you sign the bottom because it's the point and that's valid. But then again, anybody could have generated that and had anyone signed it. When you get a personal letter, and it could be one sentence, why something isn't good, that person took the time to tell you where they stand for or against something, and it, and it means a lot. Um, I, I think that's the best way to go about it. One thing that I'm not a fan of, uh, and I don't think many aldermen are, it's when the robo calls or the phone calls come in. And, and yeah. for this, that phone is absolutely for anybody that wants to call and talk to their alderman. But what it does when you get on this this chain calling um, uh, movement is this is a, a service office as well. So then our lines get tied up and you can't service uh, that, that broken main that you might not know about that you need to call in or that tree that fell out, fell down in the middle of the street. Um, so a lot of times we'll get people that'll just call and they're reading a script and then they hang up, but it's call after call after call. Um, I think the message gets lost there compared to just a nice letter. Hey, Tom Smith, this is what I feel. Please uh, um, support it or don't support it. Okay, okay, great, thank you. What are several things you would like to get done or at least start it during the remainder of your current term, which ends in 23? Yeah, great question. Um, one of the biggest things that I, I and I met in the, in the beginning of this too, you asked of issues and one of the issues is the flooding uh, that happens in, in the Northwest side. Um, a portion of the southeast side, northwest, uh, southeast and southwest side, see a lot of flooding. I introduced an ordinance uh, about five years ago or four years ago. Um, and what my ordinance did is so, right now, we currently have what's called a shared sidewalk program. Um, and that means if your sidewalk is destroyed or dilapidated, since, since it's so expensive, the city splits half the cost with you. Uh, the city will pick up a chart or portion and you pick up a portion and they fix the sidewalk and it's it's at a it's at a cut rate so it's not as expensive as going through a private but i created an ordinance that does that same shared cost with um with flood control um and on the northwest side up here when we get those heavy rains a good portion of our streets are underwater up to the side up to people's porches mm. and then it floods their basements um so in our ordinance we wrote that the city will allocate X amount of dollars per year um, towards the shared sewer um, uh, flood control system. Um, and what it would do is instead of these flood controls can cost anywhere between six and $9,000. If the city picked up a portion of it and the homeowner picked up a portion of it, it would create more flood control. It's, it's saving the value of their home. Um, it's keeping the water in the street and keeping it where it belongs in the sewer system. Um, and you're generating less calls for service on the water department as well, or the sewer department to come out. What I would like to fix is the, the current administration took this ordinance and they are just assigning it to wards that are kind of favorite wards or wards that are um, voting in favor of things that are trying to get passed legislatively. Uh, and what I find is what's the unfair point, point is this was supposed to be written citywide. Wow. Allocated X amount of dollars for this citywide 
when people call in and get in the program until that money depletes, then that program shuts here and you can get back in next year or the year after. And the good thing about this program is when you get that person in flood control, they're not coming back next year or even five years later or even 10 years later, like they do with the sidewalks as they, as they, they get weathered. Um, they're pretty much good for up to 20 to 30 years with the flood control system. So that's one of my big pushes is to get this, that it's going to be citywide and everybody everywhere in the city has the opportunity to, uh, to get a hold of this uh, and to do it. So that's, that's one of my big pushes that I'd, I'd like to, to see all the way through. Okay. How do you think it's looking? Do you think it's going to, it's going to actually come to pass, come to fruition? Yeah. Cause they're used the funny thing about it is um, when we introduced this, you could see a couple of eyebrows go up and, and for political reasons, they didn't jump on it right away. Um, and then they took it and they started doing it in specific wards and it's a humongous success. Wow. So, now, so now they're using it as kind of that little piece of candy to give the alderman for, Hey, if you vote like here, one reason why I, my own ordinance that I introduced, I didn't get it in the 41st ward in the last, is because I voted against the last budget. Um, and they took an alderman that voted for the budget and gave it to them as, as, as a gift. They had X amount of dollars. Uh, for their award for people to get in this and that's just disingenuous everyone in my wow. award everyone in your awards paying the same in taxes we should all have that opportunity to, to wow. utilize and you know what's unfortunate because the constituents in your ward are suffering yeah. because of yeah. the political craziness yeah ours is even uh, the crazy thing about the flooding here it's not only documented by the city of chicago it's documented federally as well uh, and it's almost being categorized as being in a floodplain because once these letters hit the insurance companies, insurance companies start documenting this. Oh, wow, these are flood areas. These are hit, These are pretty heavy flood areas. So it's documented and it's proven that this is a major issue here um, and it's being kind of overlooked. And uh, I think I'm going to kind of watch your ward a little bit and see how, yeah, you know, really. things begin to progress. <laughs> wow. Okay, great. Well. We're going to close. Alderman Napolitano, thank you so much for being with us today. This has been wonderful. I've learned a lot. I've um, gained a lot. And um, I always love these series because each ward has different little cool tidbits and nuggets of information. And, and you see some of the challenges that you all have to endure day to day. And it's not easy. So I yeah. totally take my hat off to you in terms of what you all have to push through. And that whole rules committee thing, oh, my goodness. Yeah, great ideas just dumped over there. It's unbelievable. I mean, but but you you're made for this. You're made for this. So you'll get what you want. Um, for the, remind remind I'm going to remind everyone to watch a link to this program. We will be found on the Chicago League's website. And everyone who registered for today's program who is not a league member will receive an email with the link, along with an invitation to join the league, as well as a sign up for notice of future programs. The league has interviewed. Over 40 alders and the videos of all of these interviews are on the league's website, lwvchicago.org forward slash alderman. Please take advantage of these videos so you can learn about the different wards and those who serve on the city council who have such an impact in all of our lives. I want to say the website once again, www.lwvchicago.org forward slash alderman. This has been wonderful. I thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, this is just fabulous. I've learned a lot and gained a lot.